Time now for the morning rush. We start with Kristen Curry. Good morning. Still talking rain and snow at our southern New Mexico today. Gila and Sacramento Mountains will be favored through this afternoon and this evening, but overnight we're going to lose a lot of that moisture as that storm continues to pass to our south. So for tomorrow, expect more sunshine and warmer temperatures through about Wednesday. Fernanda? Happening today, Aztec High School students are waking up this morning getting ready to head back to school. The campus has been closed for classes since the deadly shooting happened there on the 7th. The day will start today at 8 this morning. All students will head straight to a school wide assembly, then go to shortened periods before school lets out early. There will also be counseling available all day and in the evening, another Aztec Strong meeting. How the community remembered one of the teens killed in this shooting this weekend, coming up in the Five Facts. Crystal. And as they head back to school, we'll be following the very latest on their day on air, online, and on our KRQ News app. On to other news happening today. The man police say led them on a wild chase in a stolen RV that ended in a deadly crash is expected back in court. The crash ended with APD doing a pit maneuver that Barber ended with Barber crashing into another vehicle. The other driver, Tito Pacheco, was killed. His family later sued the city, claiming APD's pursuit tactics caused that crash. Today, Barber is expected back in court for pretrial detention. We'll let you know what happens. A nearly four year old lawsuit over public education could soon come to an end. According to the Santa Fe New Mexican, a judge is now giving both sides until early next year to file closing arguments. Those behind the suit argue the state is not meeting its constitutional requirement to provide enough funding for students. The state says it's doing everything it can to support public education and that it's all about how money is being spent by individual school districts. No word on when a ruling could come down. On to other news now. President Trump says he is not going to fire special counsel Robert Mueller. Rumors he was considering the move surfaced after the president's legal team claimed email Mueller's team reportedly has from the Trump transition team were acquired illegally. A spokesman for Mueller says all documents they've obtained have been done legally. This morning, Senator John McCain is recovering after being treated at a military hospital for a viral infection in connection to treatment for brain cancer. His doctors say he's, quote, responding positively to the ongoing treatment. The 81-year-old is now back in Arizona and will undergo physical therapy and rehabilitation. On to new news this morning. Passengers looking to set sail across the Caribbean seas. They had to return back to the Florida coast after a mysterious illness struck hundreds of passengers. Cruise liner Royal Caribbean says nearly 300 of its guests came down with a gastrointestinal I should say, illness similar to the norovirus. The ship is currently being sanitized from top to bottom before setting sail again. A Miss Universe contestant is refusing to pack down over a controversial photo despite receiving several death threats about this. Take a look at your TV screens here. This is Miss Iraq, Sarah Idan. She's on the right side of the picture alongside Miss Israel on the left. In the caption, she wrote, Peace and love for Miss Iraq and Miss Israel. The problem is Iraq and Israel don't have any formal diplomatic relations at this time. Despite all that, Adan says she has no regrets and is refusing to take the picture down. Back here at home, the Española Student Council will be handing out books to thousands of elementary students as a gift before the holiday season. The high school students collected more than 2,000 books. Today, they will be distributing them to the 11 elementary schools there. They say it's to improve literacy in the district, which has the highest rate of poverty in the state. A civil lawsuit against Curry County filed more than two years ago is going to trial at the end of April. That's according to the Eastern New Mexico News. When a former jail officer, Weston Piesnell, filed the complaint claiming he was harassed by his employers at the detention center for not covering up an alleged excessive force claim by an inmate. Piesnell claims the county violated the Whistleblower Protection Act by demoting him and pressuring him to resign after he voiced concerns. The case is now scheduled for a three-day jury trial beginning April 25th. Kristen. Fueled the Thomas Fire this weekend, sending firefighters scrambling to save lives and homes as thousands were evacuated from the Santa Barbara area, with winds threatening to bring down power lines and spark more wildfires. Southern California Edison is considering turning off electricity to some parts of Malibu. They also have a wind advisory in effect for portions of Southern California. Of course, we'll keep tabs on that for you, bringing you back here at home. Albuquerque, no concerns today. Our metro threat index at a zero. We're talking highs in the 50s, sunshine with light. Winds only about five to ten miles per hour more out of the west. Crystal. 
On to this interesting story. Take a look at this. If your name is Sydney, this next story is literally for you. United Airlines is giving five lucky winners named Sydney a free trip to Australia. The giveaway is to kick off the airline's new 17-hour, 35-minute flight from Houston, Texas to Sydney, Australia. United will accept 20 different spellings of the name. Winners will be chosen December 28th. Good luck. Kristen. Time to get a check on your Monday morning commute. Not seeing anything major out there. Everything moving at posted speeds on both interstates and surface streets. Of course, we'll keep tabs on the roadways for you throughout the morning. I love this next story. It's a day 77-year-old Luciano Barraza from Wisconsin has been waiting to celebrate for a half a century. He earned his Ph.D. back in 1967. He never got the chance to participate in the commencement ceremony, though. That's because he was working in Mexico and he had to go back to work. After seeing his daughter graduate with her Ph.D. a few years ago, Luciano was reminded of what he really missed out on. There he is. Oh, so the, his grandson made a few phone calls to see if the university would let him walk across the stage. This weekend, he got the chance. Oh Do you see goodness. his eyes were a little yeah, purple he's tears? Emotional. Oh, rocking that cap and gown. Yeah, I like it. And that's such a special day. Mm -hmm. I'm no glad he was able to do it. All right, time for the five facts. And number five, a Santa Fe couple is looking for answers this morning after a holiday Grinch was caught on camera stealing Christmas decorations. It happened Tuesday in the Casa Alegre neighborhood during broad daylight. The couple tells News 13 they believe it was a man in his 20s and a teen girl who pulled off the crime. Video captured the man taking lights from a bush while the teen plucks a few light up candy canes. Oh, no. So bad. Yeah. Number four, Democratic lawmakers will start looking for options to fill a top leadership position in the state Senate. This after Senator Michael Padilla was voted out of the Senate Majority Whip position. This comes two weeks after Padilla dropped out of the race for lieutenant governor. The fallout comes after two federal lawsuits say Padilla sexually harassed women while managing Albuquerque's 911 call center in 2007. The caucus is now set to meet in early January to elect a new majority whip. At number three, mild temperatures across the state today, but we will still be watching for rain and snow out of our southern New Mexico, mainly the Gila and the Sacramento Mountains, drying out and warming up over the next couple of days. Number two now happening today. More than 200 New Mexicans are descending upon the nation's capital. They're trying to sway Congress to pass a DREAM Act before years end, and more importantly, before a funding bill is passed. It comes after the Trump administration ended the program in September, put in the future of some 800,000 undocumented youth in limbo. Today, the group is joining thousands of others asking Congress to pass a Clean Dream Act. We'll be following their efforts on air online and on our KRQ News app. Brings us to number one now. Happening today, Aztec High School students are waking up this morning, getting ready to head back to class. This comes about a week and a half after the deadly school shooting that took the lives of two of their classmates, Casey Jordan Marquez, and Francisco Paco Fernandez. The campus has been closed since the shooting on the 7th. Funeral services for both students were held over the weekend. Aztec High cheerleaders attended Casey's service in their cheer uniforms in honor of their beloved cheerleader. Paco's services were adorned with lowrider cars, which his family says it was his favorite types of cars. They will be missed.